and I'm at the World AI Show here in Singapore at uh, Marina Bay Sands. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Miao Song, who is the Global Chief Information Officer with GLP. And she'll be sharing with us the highlights of her talk earlier uh, during the show about generative AI, a topic that uh, is of great interest to everybody now with chat GPT and all that. So thank you so much, Miao, for your time today. Sure, thank you. Thank you for having me today. So um, today I'm going to share with you um, probably on the use case of Gen AI as um, what I shared in the, in the AI show that this is a humongous opportunities for the organizations yes, uh, for early adoption. That's right, yeah. You, you share like a very fascinating uh, adoption journey for your organization. I think a lot of our, of our audience have no questions about what AI in general means. But uh, I think you, from your experience, what is the common question that people would have that needs sort of maybe more training or awareness on around AI? I actually think it's a, this general awareness has to be built across the society because whether you like it or not, the technology um, revolution is coming. Um, you know, uh, this, this time is quite different because for the first time, the AI technology, because it's basing LL model, large language um, model, so you basically can actually summarize um, and generate more content, new content, which is very different than the traditional AI and machine learning. Um, I, I actually think a lot of our areas for early adoption to drive efficiency um, and also help human beings to do the work better. Obviously, there's downside of this uh, area as well. A lot of people are concerned their the jobs Absolutely. potentially might be replaced by AI in the very near future. I think that's one question that uh, I think our, many of our audience would also have. You talk about uh, its ability to summar summarize text and also its ability to do searches very quickly. So we can think of many industries or many kind of jobs that will be potentially uh, complemented if not replaced by AI, right? Yeah, so this is something I think um, we as human beings have to look at both sides of the story. So there's a very positive side that the efficiency, automation, will be hugely adoptive through AI technology. On the other side, there are some concerns around how to regulate AI, because if you don't regulate or you don't control the, the way it goes, it could be easily out of human being control. Um, so that's the downside of that. Plus, there might be some concern around security, yes. risk management, etc. Um, so I think basically what needs to happen is that we look at this positively and while we manage the risk of AI. It's not that we can completely stop it, right? So you can't stop it from, from, from happening. Um, any jobs, for example, if you do a repetitive jobs, you just repeat whatever information, you know, that might be um, replaced very quickly by AI because that's a typical use case of AI. Yeah. On the other hand, AI can help human beings to do job much, much better. For example, in the uh, healthcare, you know, in fact, AI can actually assist the doctor uh, to do a better job. For example, you know, to read radiology information and help doctor make a better decision. So the we 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 position AI is that helping people to generate more benefits through AI adoption rather than say, hey, you know, it is very negative. Let's stop it completely. Right. Okay, so talking about adoption then, mm -hmm. for organizations looking at AI, I think it's very tempting to just, you know, jump onto the bandwagon and say, you know, this sounds really exciting and really sexy and glamorous, let's just do some AI. Mm -hmm. But I think, I guess when it comes to technologies and innovations, one of the sort of uh, um, important lessons that people have is, you know, don't force the technology into anything, but think about your problems and use the technology. Yeah, so, uh, that's right. Uh, so the first thing is, um, you have to understand the space. It's actually pretty tacky. So it's not very easy. It's not like you have a conversation with ChatGPT, your business problem will be solved. You need to have someone who really understands your business use cases, where is the pain point your, your, of your business opportunity and the business opportunities. But also you need to have people who understand technology deeply and how to translate the business opportunity into technology adoption in this space. Um, so you, 
or I'm also like we need people who understand data, but also understand technology to to build it very quickly. And this is very different than a traditional large IT project. You know, traditionally when we when people did large IT projects, a huge consultants form, you have right. very linear approach for years, right? This is not that way. It's very agile. You know, you need to brainstorm, you need to test and learn because none of us is, you know, is, is sure at the moment where it leads to us, right? However, if you don't do things earlier and you may might be lagging behind as an organization. Mm -hmm. You have a very fascinating mm. story that you told where mm. whereby you brought along, you know, your organization, your staff, your board members onto this uh, AI journey to get everybody sort of up to speed in terms of, you know, what the technology is capable of. Can you share with us some of these sort of uh, maybe some success lessons that we can all take from yeah. that? Yeah. So I think the first one is education is important to make sure that people have some real life experience uh, to, I call it play with AI in the, in the enterprise environment. So basically, you have to set up a secured environment for people to test and learn. Uh, so that people have, once you, I call it playground, right? When you have a playground with AI, people have a sense around what it can do, what it can't do. The second one is, um, I also think each organization needs to define the guidance to people. What you, you can do, what you can't do. For example, cybersecurity concern, you can't, you know, put the most confidential business information, you know, to play with AI, you know, personal information, you know, you have to be compliant with the national security law everywhere, right? All of this, uh, organization needs to define some standard and guidance and communicate actively to the to people. So that that's what we did in our organization, educate, educate, and educate. The second one, I also think a, the technology people have to be more hands-on to learn quickly. There are many ways of learning this, right? You can learn from doing, but you can also learn from getting to know more information and you, you build your use cases. So, so that's how you learn quickly. You need to have that type of technology folks to be to be immersed into your business to, in order to adopt this new technology, but also build your live AI cases. So it's a reiterate of test and learn all the time. Right, okay. So it's not something that uh, it's, um, I think many people who are playing with chat GPT will immediately think, okay, let's just, you know, attach uh, or plug in the application and then everything will be like magic. But it's not. It's, it's not. Very it's not. It's very, it's very, it's quite tacky actually, because if you want to build a proper capability in the organization, use the right AI, you need to think about what is your data structure. Uh, what is your architecture, overall technology architecture in a secure environment. So, so, so in, in fact, how you structure your technology stacks is a key. So it's, yes, you can have a conversation with ChatGPT, but that's not how you're gonna, how you're not, not gonna run your business securely, right? So that's the that's thing. Um, therefore, I see a few key capabilities in organization has to happen. The first one, people are really, who really understand the space, hands-on, who can build that uh, use cases in the new technology. That's very techy people. Second one, overall architecture um, people on the data, especially on the data architecture. Uh, you, how you how you actually structure your data is a key as well, right? What type of data you want to feed into AI to generate the insights? So it's 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 a science. It's it's important. The third one, I think, is again back to the security space, and then you need to also looking at the security and compliance requirements for your business to make sure you don't have any security incident, you don't disclose any confidential information, or you don't have any decision made by AI which led to uh, fraud or wrong wrongdoing for your organization. Mm, right. I think we can, uh, you know, uh, devote another one hour to talking about the necessary data architecture to ensure that we embed the security and all, all, all that kind of concerns. Yeah. But I think we are running out of time. So thank you so much for sharing some of the very important tips for our audience who are keen to adopt the technology and some of the things that they need to think about and that is not a magic, that there's a lot of um, hard work going on behind the scenes to get yeah. it to work. And this is definitely the technology trend, right? If you look at um, years ago when we moved from analog time into digital time, 
and you see how many pe- how many organizations they couldn't, and then they fired the trend, they couldn't follow the trend. Now they were gone, right? So to think about it, I think that again, this is at the time for both technology revolution, but also I think maybe it changed the way people think. It changed the way people do their job. It changed, even changed their lifestyles, right? I personally use um, Jenny I already in my, in my day-to-day life to help me to to be faster, to, to you know, so your, it's a positive side, right? Your doctor's yeah. appointments and all those yeah, uh, appointments. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's something that we cannot uh, deny or sit mm. under the carpet. It's definitely mm. coming to disrupt our lives, so yeah. we have to be prepared for yeah. it. Yeah, and it's also changed the way in many industries, mm. healthcare industry, Absolutely. education. So how we educate our next generation, because traditionally we, we ask our kids to memorize the knowledge but with Gen AI, maybe they don't have to memorize on exactly. those type That's of right. information. Right. Yeah. Yet they focus on more important on innovation, generate creative ideas for the future. Who knows, right? It's a good question to ask ourselves yeah. who knows what happen. it lead to us, where it lead to us, right. and how we deal with this situation. Yeah. yeah. So thinking about that, maybe the next podcast that I do with you will be a, I don't know, avatar of myself, and you'll be talking <laughs> to an avatar. Right? Uh, you never know, it's going to happen very soon. May, you know, the Lately, there are technology around, you know, voice AI, right? right. So, you know, facial recognition, exactly. voice yeah. AI, avatar, everything's happening next that's to right. us. That's right. yeah. I'll be disrupted away. Yeah, it is. it is. I hope it's disruptive in a very positive, in a positive way, way in yes. our lifestyle. Yeah, so thank you for the opportunity okay, to talk welcome. to me before I'm disrupted away. Thank you so much. Uh, thank Michael. you. Thank you.